Let me see if I can change the lighting. Hopefully, okay. These are Bulam Bulavinaka. Good morning, good morning, uh, Australia. I know it's nine o'clock in the morning and some of you may have just woken up. So uh, I hope you had a good sleep. Bulavinaka, Melbourne. Bulavinaka, Sydney. Bulavinaka, Brisbane. <laughs> to all our uh, uh, friends in Australia. Yandra, 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 Vinaka. Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, beautiful uh, afternoon here in uh, Hilo in Hawaii. It's one o'clock in the afternoon, but I was expecting some rain, uh, but there's no rain. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. So rain is also good. Uh, Sylvia, my mother always say, because my mother is from Kandahu, uh, and the Fijian word for rain in Kandahu language is, uh, Kandahu dialect is uh, langi, eh? langi. And she always say, you know, the word langi, langi langi means it's a blessed day. So ever since I see rain, that word always come in my mind. You know, usually we say, oh, nakira, eh? it's a bad weather. But the way my mother see it is a very posi positive twist. You know, she always say, when it's nakira, when it's raining, it's a blessed day. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, OK, Vinaka, Vinaka, welcome, welcome, everybody. So let's see if we can uh, play one song to kickstart our Talano today. Vinaka uh, Vakalev for joining in. This is a very special Talano session with uh, Sylvia Kum from uh, Melbourne. So wherever you're logging in from, if you're still lying in bed with your tutuvi, uh, this will be a beautiful song to maybe, I don't know, whether to put you back to sleep or it might wake you up, I'm not sure. Whichever way, let's do this. This is a beautiful song from Our Paradise in Kandahar. I hope you'll like this. <laughs>
So I hope that uh, those of you who are catching this uh, live this morning will surely enjoy that beautiful song from Kandamu. Vinaka uh, Vinaka Wakalevu for joining in today. Nianda Vinaka now Minama Kandre, Bulivinaka Vilkesa Wanga, Bulivinaka Anna Keresi, the Bulivinaka May Perth, Western Australia, Vinaka Wakalevu Nisa, and the Samatiko May Bulivinaka Talinga, Bunuai, Merlita Maniali. Thank you to those of you who are joining in this morning. Um, so this is a special Talanoa session. It will be a short and sweet. Uh, Talanoa session with the president of the Fijian Community Association in Victoria, Australia. Uh, we are so blessed this morning that we have uh, Sylvia Kum, um, who recently uh, joined my Vosavakaviti Kalasi uh, that we often hold online by Zoom. And uh, the reason why I, in, uh, I invited her to this Talano session was uh, just for her to share a little bit about her experience in the classes. Uh, because recently I've just advertised the term two uh, of our Fijian language classes. And not only we teach the language classes, we're also going to have some workshop. Uh, the first one is a Maramaniviti workshop that is specifically organized for women only. And it can be, any woman from any part of the world. They don't have to be of Fijian ancestry. If you are from America or from Australia or from anywhere in the world, but you love Fiji, um, please join us on this uh, uh, workshop. And they only run for six weeks. And also, well, before we greet our, um, uh, our Wulangin Dokai today, uh, we've been having some inquiries also from our gentlemen. I have a few inquiries from our Turangani Viti, and they're asking me, Dr. T, you're organizing the workshop for women. What about us? <laughs> <laughs> and so I have decided to also organize a session for our men, our Turangani Viti. So keep an eye out tonight. I will put up our poster for the Turangani Viti. So this is for any young Fijian men, whether you are part European descent, whether you were born in Fiji and lived overseas, and you just wanted to know some cultural protocol about Fiji, please uh, send us an email and you're most welcome to join us. Oh, there's some new faces this morning. Bulivinaka William Wanga Levy, Bulivinaka Kai, and Bulivinaka Barbara Cameron. Thank you very much for joining in today. And Sophia Loloma, Don Bulivinaka Mea America. Okay, uh, now let's greet our chief guest today, uh, Sylvia Kum. Bulivinaka Sylvia. Bulivinaka Dr. T. Yes, Vinaka uh, Valley for joining me today. What's the weather like in Melbourne today? Uh, it's a bit um, uh, dark. I think it's uh, projected to rain today here in uh, Melbourne. Uh, it's not good because I am meant to be going to a Pacifica Leaders barbecue. <laughs> so I don't know how wet the sausages will be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the way you dress today doesn't look like rain. It will bring uh, some sunshine, I'm sure, Sylvia. Yes. This is a beautiful dress from the sunny Queensland. And, wow. uh, you know, the Queenslanders always dress light. So it's a nice cotton dress. Wow. Sylvia. And thank you for joining us today. And thank you for all you do as well for the Fijian community uh, in, in Melbourne and Victoria as, as, as a whole. Uh, because, you know, it's wonderful to see uh, Maramani Viti, a Fijian woman like you, uh, taking uh, that leadership role. And it makes as uh, uh, women, you know, um, respected in so many spaces, especially in the space as being the president of the um, Fijian Community Association. And so before we uh, start out, Talano, would you like to just firstly introduce yourself, uh, uh, your name and your uh, connection to Fiji? Because I'm sure a lot of people are connecting in, they know connection from your mom or connection from your bumbu. So please go ahead, Sylvia. So, Bulavinaka, everyone, and Namaste. Uh, my name is uh, Sylvia Kuhn. I live in Melbourne, but I'm originally from Fiji. I uh, was born in the infamous CWM hospital in Suva. Um, but uh, my dad, because of his uh, music uh, industry work that he does, we, we actually settled in Nandi, Nandi, and that's where I grew up for 18 years in Nandi town. Um, my dad's uh, side is from um, Kandavu, his uh, mother's side is from Kandavu, 
and my mother's uh, my mother's side is actually from uh, Tambia in uh, Lombasa. Um, my upbringing, I actually, um, as I grew up in uh, uh, Nandi with uh, uh, three other brothers and one sister, I, I went to Mount St. Mary's School in uh, Nandi town, um, not in the town, in Matinta. And, um, and then I went to the high school there in uh, Nandi town, uh, the Sangam SKM College. And um, I must say the education in Fiji is, uh, is quite, um, I, I really I really admire like the syllabus and the things that we did learn in uh, Fiji. But unfortunately, one thing about the syllabus was uh, I, we couldn't choose which language in, uh, especially in Mount St. Mary's that we could um, actually learn. So I wanted to learn the Fijian language, but unfortunately um, the way they do uh, language is at a young age is you have to go by your father's uh, name. And my father's stepfather that raised him actually is uh, Indian. So I had to go to the Indian classes. So I learned Indian all of primary school. I don't, I've forgotten now, <laughs> but I understand um, the language, but I can't um, speak it fluently. But uh, I really wanted to learn the Fijian language, but as Fiji being colonized by the British for so long, we've had to really um, speak English, not only at school, but also at, at home. And that's, that's the sad part that, uh, you know, all of us, they call us the k or the half caste. We, we tend to just learn only English. Mm -hmm. And then when we migrate to places like Australia, we forget because Fiji speaks English as their first main language. We tend to forget about that cultural aspect of the language, mm -hmm. because the language is not just speaking the words and knowing how to speak it, speak the words. It's the cultural aspect of it, yes. and all the heritage behind it. So, wow, Sylvia, for sharing a little bit more about your mobile and saying bullet to all the students or ex-students of Mount Saint Mary. I'm sure there's a few <laughs> connecting in today. Um, just saying hello to my cousin here, Sarah Robinson. She's connecting in from Nandi. Bula vinaka to everybody connecting in from the Jet Set Town in Nandi. Vinaka vinaka wakale for joining in. And also those who went to the Sangam SKM College uh, in Nandi, <laughs> if you're listening to this Talano session, uh, greeting you all as well. Um, and nice to see one of your ex scholars uh, joining my program this morning. Oh, we also have a Kandavu lady, Lavinia Tamani, uh, logging into <laughs> from Nandi and Vinaka uh, So awesome to see those who are joining in his connection to the Jet Set Town of Nandi. Vinaka Wakalev, Sarah Sylvia, for sharing your story, plus also the the edu the background of your language, yeah? the language acquisition, as they call it. Um, and I did know that you took Hindustani. Um, <laughs> you know, in as a stream in your school, you are absolutely right. Uh, they just, they just, you don't have a choice. They just put you yeah, in these classes. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a really good point that you share. Maybe uh, some teachers who are listening in today from Fiji might uh, create a change, you know, in Fiji. I think there's a new movement now in Fiji where uh, the Fijian language and the Hindustani language can be taught in mm -hmm. all schools in Fiji. And I think that's really good. And if I can add the Rotuma language there too, for those of you who are from Rotuma, uh, this is a beautiful language as well that we should learn in Fiji. Yeah, because Fiji is such a uh, cosmopolitan nation. Say what about Sylvia? True, <laughs> true. Mm -hmm. Can't tell. I went to Fiji many years ago, pre-COVID, and it's totally changed uh, from what I remember. Like I came to Australia in 89, so now you can quickly multiply what my age is. <laughs> I guess that's what my age is. But um, but everything's changed. Like you can't, it's, it's a melting pot. I reckon Fiji is the melting pot of all multicultural uh, places. Um, you know, the shops are no longer owned just by Chinese. You've got Koreans, you've got Taiwanese, you've got all nationalities. Kandina Sarana, absolutely. It's like... Uh, um other international, this international flavor yeah, in Fiji. Even if you want to eat Japanese food, there's restaurants, you know, 
Uh, yes. I think there's the Daikoku, I think there's one famous uh, Japanese restaurant. Dinners, especially in Nandi, eh? you just, whatever you feel like eating, if you want to eat pasta, there's a, there's a restaurant for it. If you want to eat roti and curry, there's a restaurant for it. So Dina Sarangai, Fiji is such a very special place and um, it's very, very international. So Vinaka Vinaka Wakalev. So, um, and then now, if you can just touch a little bit, Sylvia, about your current role as president of the Fijian Community Association. You know, I was, when I saw your, your name being mentioned, you know, through the uh, social media, and then also to see you as a Maramani Viti, what was it like to you when you were elected as the president of the Fiji Community Association in Victoria, Australia? Uh, okay, so I've been, this is my third year as the president of the Fijian Community Association in Victoria, but our association is, um, this is, we're going on our eighth year. And I, I just want to say up front that we are not the only association in uh, Victoria there of that represents Fijians. There's uh, many uh, others. There's a lot of Indian ones um, that are faith-based. Uh, and there's uh, Fijians one, Fijian, other Fijian ones also that are also doing good work for the community. Uh, for the one that I run, we have over 500 members. Uh, most of them are um, indigenous Fijians, uh, Itoke Fijians, not by choice. It's just the, the way um, it has been, but we do have, um, you know, multicultural. We have Australians, we have uh, a lot of uh, half caste. We've got Fiji, uh, Chinese or Tumans in our association. Um, a uh, lot of the work that we do is actually um, welfare work for our community. Uh, it's funded by the Victorian state government. Uh, we do a lot of fundraising events. We do the traditional Fiji Day events. We do the Fiji language and culture events that lead up to the Fiji Day events. And we also work together with uh, other Fijian uh, community groups in other states in um, in Victoria, like uh, for the Fijian Diaspora Women's Association in New South Wales, uh, with the um, one uh, Fijian community group in Queensland and South Australia. Um, you know, Fijians, uh, we all know someone, we all related to someone. And I think this is why it's so important that um, once you people start to uh, do classes like this, you learn to appreciate that uh, you are not alone in this, you know, this land that is, you know, uh, you know, traditionally owned by the Aboriginal peoples of the land, uh, that you're not alone. Um, you have family, uh, you have, uh, even if it's distant um, uh, relatives or people from the same village, but they're just all scattered around this big continent of Australia. And, you know, this is what I like about this kind of class. It makes you appreciate that one day you might meet someone at an airport or in whatever, and as soon as you say where you're from and that person will say, oh my God, you're like, we're from the same village or even from the same town, or we all went to the same school. This is how, you know, we connect because at the times like this, I think through the pandemic, what has become more, most important is people need to, people have learned that connections have been lost and people need to connect again. And the way you do that is through your culture and your tradition. Yeah, there's so many uh, who are agreeing with what you're sharing. Everyone uh, listening in, Bolivinaka Rosi, Bolivinaka Tetu Sindranra, Dolandra Vitao. Thank you so much, uh, Sylvia, for highlighting yeah, those very important points the importance of being of connection. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think that's something that the pandemic has taught us that uh, you're not alone, as I really like what you said there, you're not isolated, you've got someone there, you, you've got a family, or you have uh, people who went to the same school as you, there's always opportunity to, to connect, and what a way to do it through uh, the lessons, the classes that you have taken. Eh? So again, from all of us, uh, congratulations to you, Sylvia. Uh, for your work as president for the Fijian Community Association in Victoria. I know there will be members who will be watching today, um, but I'd just like to uh, congratulate you for taking on this role. It's not easy because you've got 500 plus people uh, that you have to work with, but I'm sure with your uh, the support from mom and for you to being a very strong Kandavu lady, I know you can <laughs> 
keep everybody in line. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and since you mentioned about uh, the lessons, the Kalas, yeah, the, the Fijian language, um, the reason why we're doing this uh, Talano session was to talk about this uh, Fijian language classes. I know we were supposed to do this Talano on Monday, but I mentioned to you that we have been uh, inundated with inquiries from potential students, the students who are listening in today who have registered and some who are planning but not sure whether it's for them. Uh, what, what motivated you, Sylvia, to take on the classes, uh, Fijian classes in the last six weeks? So one of my main uh, motivations, obviously, is to to connect back to back to culture. Like there's some things you can read in books, but there's very few books to read on Fijian language and culture. Uh, you have to order it from Amazon, or you know, and they all in small print or or something like that. But but as a leader, you know, I go to a lot of um, uh, functions and even meetings where the predominant language, even though everyone speaks English, the predominant language is actually, they speak in the, you know, the Fijian language in the Bowen dialect. And I understand Fijian, but I don't understand totally all the words. I can make sense just by guessing from the, hearing the structure of the sentence, what they're actually saying. And they don't do, they don't speak in Fijian language out of disrespect towards me, it's just that they speak in the language because it's comfortable for them to speak in that language. Um, and I don't mind that. But as a leader, I, I wanted to join the class because I wanted to learn, go back from the very start and learn the basic phrases, uh, the basic way to introduce myself uh, formally uh, and informally, those kind of things. I wanted to learn from there. But what I didn't expect out of your uh, first uh, your first six week class was I actually got a splash of culture, and that's the exciting part of me. Language is one thing, but the cultural part is the exciting thing because you start to go back into history about what your you know my both uh, my my both boomboos actually went through all that stuff, and then you understand why people behave the way they behave. It's because of the way um, our villages and our, you know, our hierarchy in the in in the towns and villages are actually structured. Uh, I sometimes, you know, <clears throat> for some reason, it I usually kind of gravitate towards the culture side of things, even though the lessons are in, you know, teaching everyone the, the language. I have to say to those who are watching that I'm not a linguist but I'm very passionate about language. And uh, I've been teaching it for over 10 years now, thanks to the support in New Zealand yeah, that allowed me to dig deep into the language itself. But my training is in archeology span and anthropology. And so in these classes, I joined the two together. So for you as a student, did you enjoy a little bit of both there? You're learning to speak and also a little bit of history? Yeah, I, I really like that. I like that style because I think, um, I think yourself as a teacher, um, you've got to engage, you know, and uh, the type. They're probably students that do like just plain language, just teach me the, the language bit. But there's, I think culture actually ag adds a bit of variety. And I like the fact that you play the music before the class starts and that way you, and then you explain uh, what the song is about. Uh, lucky you don't ask us to sing it. <laughs> I hear some humming a little bit. <laughs> so for those of you who are listening in, uh, that's something that I try to incorporate in the classes. So not only the language we have, I really like what you said, a splash of culture. Uh, I think that's a really beautiful way to say it, that we try and incorporate a little bit of culture and also the music. As most of you will know that Fijians, we are natural in singing. Uh, you know, we are just, uh, you go somewhere and somebody tune a song, you just stand up if you know the song and you just belt it out, yeah? Um, but some of my students, they're very shy. I can tell uh, Sylvia has got a beautiful soprano voice, but I know maybe the next term we'll hear her voice. This time she's <laughs> mumbling the words, <laughs> humming it. 
So <laughs> I'm gonna look forward to term two when she's actually gonna sing with us. So I'm glad the singing too is very important uh, and in the learning. Yeah, what do you think about that, uh, Sylvia? A little bit of uh, culture, a little bit of language and a little bit of the singing. Yes. Uh, my dad is actually, uh, my dad was actually a singer in uh, Nandi. Uh, he played in the bands in uh, the Fiji, uh, the, uh, the bands in, uh, uh, along the hotels in Nandi, especially the Regent and Travelodge. Nice. So our, our, um, our family is uh, already musically inclined. But one thing about my dad was he was a very strict man and he didn't want us to learn how to sing or learn or be involved in the music industry because he said to us, it'll get you nowhere. This is because we are in Fiji, right? He said, it'll get you nowhere. Start, focus instead on your studies so that you can become a doctor or a lawyer. You know, it's the, it's our parents want the best for us because they know that musicians back home don't get paid much. Um, and that's why he wants the best, best for us. But when we came to Australia, the one thing that we we to assimilate into the Australian culture was join join churches and in churches what happens everyone sings, yeah and you have to learn the songs and you know it's it's ninety percent singing, <laughs> yeah. Yes, for highlighting that as well. Uh, Sylvia. So for those of you who are listening in, if you are interested to join my class, uh, my Fijian language classes, it will start on the week of May the 16th. So in a week's time, so not next week, the week after, uh, you're welcome to get in touch with me and uh, we'll send you the registration form. And uh, so Sylvia is here just sharing her experience uh, in the class so that you can actually hear a student who took uh, my class. So with those six weeks of classes you experience, maybe just share uh, two key things, maybe, you know, we know every week we always go around the class and say, what did you learn? Uh, but maybe what are two takeaways from the six weeks of learning, Sylvia? I think uh, one of the big uh, takeaways for me is uh, because you went through the whole cultural aspect of it is the way we introduce ourselves and the very importance of the way the, the words are pronounced. Can, can I practice now? I'm going to practice yeah. Yay! Practice it now. Ladies so this and is the Sylvia is gonna do her vacambula. <laughs> so uh, this is my practice. Nayadangu uh, or Sylvia Kum, Aongone ni Kandavu, Nanongu Koro or Tawava, Nanongu Koro Nivasu or Tambia, Nanongu Matanitu or Tovata. Vinaka. So there you go, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So those are in six weeks. <laughs> Uh, over and over again, we all meet together one hour a week and we just do our uh, sharing. We have our homework to do and uh, they, the students, uh, they learn how to do their vacambula. So you'll notice with Sylvia, she's connecting the, her bumbus from both sides, yeah, from Tambia and Lambasa and her connection to Kandavu. So there's a Tovata side and the Kandavu side. And that's a beautiful thing. You know, I love the fact that Sylvia can incorporate her two bumbu into this uh, learning experience. That's wonderful. So uh, Sylvia, if you want to speak to a potential student who's listening in today uh, in terms of uh, you know, wanting them to join our Kalasi, uh, what would you encourage them to do? I just want to encourage uh, not only for uh, people like me, but also for current Fijians uh, that actually do speak the language to actually uh, be uh, take one of Dr. T's classes because you will learn um, phrases and words uh, and and culture uh, that you will never get you'll never learn this from anywhere else like you it's unless someone who's come from Fiji and has, is is actually qualified and all that stuff and experience in doing this this is the opportunity to learn this and because I'm a uh, uh, what they say is Keloma uh, or half caste, you know, the way they call us in Fiji. I was called um, uh, Kumalavula. <laughs> My uncles used to tease me Kumalavula because I was so white. <laughs> uh, um, I, I just encourage people to invest. I know that everyone goes, ah, why is it that much? Inve this is an investment for your culture. Think about it. This is an investment for your culture. You know, that people can spend hundreds of dollars on rugby vests and uh, tops and everything. Think of this as an investment to your culture because 
what you're going to learn is something that you're going to carry on if you continue to practice it i think the key word is practice don't ruin your investment by just uh, paying the money, go to the classes and then forget about it. You have to keep learning. You have to keep practicing, uh, you know, your introductions and all that kind of stuff. Because if you don't apply it, it you just wasted your money. I, I, I encourage those, those who are, you know, double, not, you know, not really sure. Don't be afraid. If you think, oh, no, everyone's going to laugh at the way I pronounce certain words and everyone's going to be looking at me and going, why is this person, you know, doing the class? They should know it because they look Fijian. Please come because there's going to be a lot of people that will be feeling the same as you. There's going to be a lot of people that think they know the language, but they're going to go, oh, no, I've been saying those phrases wrong. Or, oh, no, I've, I'm not doing, you know, the, the gumu na and the ongo, ongori and oya. I'm getting, I'm starting to <laughs> remember sometimes. That's and, um, you know, the way the, the family cultural protocols of the way you introduce your your grandmother and your, you know, from your father's side and the one for your mother's side. I was going, oh my God, there's so many things to learn. <laughs> I didn't realize how complex the, all these languages, but I suppose with practice, everything will come naturally. This kind of thing. Okay. If you think in six weeks, you're going to learn the language like that. No, you have to keep doing it. Just like they teach French in schools, just like they teach Chinese in schools think of this as the same and and learning this if you also also if you're um, a person who, who is uh, white and travels to fiji a lot i encourage you to do this kind of class because it'll actually learn uh, teach you to um, learn key phrases to use in fiji as a tourist especially if you're going every year why not learn the language and just think of it as an investment to your to your culture and to the people you people you love. And I, I'm told that the money that you spend on this, uh, we are spending on these classes actually goes towards some projects that Dr. T has. Uh, and, um, you know, it's not uh, it's not for her holiday in Ibiza. <laughs> or something like that, but it's it's well worth spent money. That's all I'm saying. It's well worth, and don't be afraid. There's others, others like you who's gonna who who's gonna be going. Oh, you know, everyone's gonna laugh at the way I pronounce certain words and and how I'm speaking in broken Fijian and bro broken English. Don't worry. It's the classes are very laid back. Uh, I know. And um, I was gonna call you Auntie. I know, Doctor <laughs> T. Doctor T said uh, there's homework. Don't stress. Don't stress. There's no uh, old school Fiji style. If you don't do your homework, you have to go and write hundred times on the board <laughs> or something. It's okay. It's very informal. It's very, uh, she sticks to the syllabus, but you're going to really enjoy not only the class, but also the people in the class. You're going to learn from, uh, you, you actually might meet some people that you said, oh my God, so-and-so, you know, in the class. So I really hope uh, everyone does do the class. So we like a level. That's so awesome to hear. Uh, for those of you who are listening in, I've got a few book projects that I'm working uh, with on the side. Like uh, level, Sylvia, for uh, alluding to that. Yes. So uh, whatever contribution that we get from our students, it goes to my uh, Doctor T Book Fund, and uh, we are creating more books and more resources in the Vosovakaviti. And uh, one of my dreams, Sylvia, is to inundate the bookstores and online bookstores with Fijian language resources. You know, we need to do that. We need to change the, the narrative. You know, most of the time I hear a lot of my students like Sylvia, man, Dr. T, I'm looking for materials. I can't find it. There's no Fijian stuff there. And in my mind, I'm thinking, let's do this class. Let's do this together. And so that's what I've been doing over the last couple of year, year or so by you know, creating little booklets uh, on different topics of Fiji's culture. And then we're going to put it online for people to purchase them for their resources, for gifts uh, within the family. So we can have a lot of resources there. It won't be that expensive because whatever money comes through, it'll just um, uh, roll and we're going to make some more. It's going to be really, really fun, uh, really, really fun projects. And I've been working alongside some of our teachers uh, Fijian language teachers online, 
and it's a partnership. Yeah, it's a partnership. So wonderful. Sylvia. So before we finish our talano today, um, Sylvia, and before you start preparing to go for your event, your last advice um, towards uh, our future learners, particularly our uh, those of mixed heritage, our young Fijians who maybe uh, who are thinking about taking classes in the future, not necessarily maybe from me, any classes that are offered in Canada, in the UK, in Europe, there are classes happening. So what would you like to tell them with the importance of going to these classes? What benefits will it be for them? Um, I just want to say, uh, if you're thinking of doing this class and you haven't made up your mind yet, I, I really encourage you to, to sign up for, uh, if it's not Dr. T's class, but um, you know another person's class in the Fijian language, I really uh, encourage you to do that because, you know, as you go, see, I'm, I'm, I'm in my, I'm 50. As you get older, don't wait till you're like in your forties to say, oh, I should learn about my culture. Do it at a very young age, because as soon as you do it at a very young age, you you will be start building that um, that connection through language and culture back to the homeland. Aust you might have been born in Australia, that's fine. You might have been born in you know New Zealand, whatever. But it's your it's your parents' culture and or even your parents' parents' culture mm -hmm. is 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 a part of what has made you mm -hmm. the way you are, and 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 why people behave the way behave you behave. You know, people spend hundreds of dollars, organizations spend hundreds of dollars on psychologically, psychological classes of trying to understand, you know, all the different multicultural groups so that, you know, people are not discriminated and everything. One of the ways you can inner help yourself is actually learn your culture. And it's, it's like I said before, it's an investment. Think of it even an investment of, uh, you know, every, uh, if it's not a class, a former class like this, sit down, call, pick up the phone, call your bumbu or if, if they're still alive or call your uncle or auntie back home and, and ask, them to, ask them to actually tell you a little bit about their past. Because I, what has happened to me is I've lost a lot of my past because a lot of my uncles and aunties have started to pass away mm -hmm. due to different, different health reasons. Mm -hmm. And some of our history has started to, uh, you know, unfortunately Fiji is not very good at record keeping. Mm -hmm. And so some of the history of our um, of our our heritage is actually lost now because I didn't take the time or neither did my brothers sisters to actually pick up the phone and engage with our uncles and aunties back home, mm -hmm. and we've lost that. Uh, you know, we we traditionally, if you look back, we traditionally keep our heritage, our history through song and dance. That's mm -hmm. why it's so important that even not only language and culture encourage our children and our youth to take part in the Fijian cultural dances, whether it be the Fijian ones or the Hindustani ones, because every movement, every music that's played is actually, is actually there's, a, there's, a, there's a symbolism of why those, um, you know, the song is written in such a way or why that hand gesture is in such a way. So I really encourage uh, you to take a take take the step now don't wait till it's too late mm -hmm. to learn about your heritage and culture for your words of encouragement and uh, i really like what you just said now you know pick up the phone uh, call someone back home uh, call your tutu or your mbumbu your nay or momo someone will know um, some information about your mobile and um even with the songs and dances there, you just mentioned to Sylvia, eh? very important. Things that may, maybe you may think, oh, just a waste of time, yeah? Or, oh, you know, sometimes we look at it, um, you know, in that light, but when you realize it, the lullaby has a story. Yeah, the lullaby has a history. The chant has a history. So that's something that you are just reminding us there, Sylvia. Uh, Sylvia, for joining us today. I really appreciate it that you were able to take your time away from your uh, good morning uh, activity, uh, but you are here with us to enlighten us. And uh, so many people have just uh, sent their lalomas to you and uh, a message of appreciation. 
that uh, you're able to be here with us, Sylvia, to share your story. Uh, anything else you'd like to say before we say goodbye? Uh, not really, but I hope my mom's made my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm starting to get hungry. Yes, thank you, Sylvia. Mom, and uh, you have a beautiful uh, day and uh, enjoy your uh, barbecue uh, wherever you're going to be driving to. Drive safe, and uh, yeah. until next time uh, when we're going to meet again for our next uh, kalasi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mother, Mother Sylvia. Mother, Mother. Naka, naka. naka. So there you go, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are so blessed to have uh, Sylvia Kum connecting from beautiful um, rainy Melbourne uh, today on a beautiful morning. Uh, so I'm just uh, so happy that she agreed to have our Talano session today rather than Monday. We were planning to talk on Monday, but I think uh, bringing it forward will be a wonderful opportunity for our potential students of the Vosabaka Viti Kalasi. Uh, those of you wanting to learn uh, the Fijian language, please get in touch with me. Uh, we're also going to be offering the Maramani Viti Workshop. So the Maramani Viti Workshop are for women, uh, mm -hmm. 17 years old, year old and up. Uh, anyone can join us, uh, please. Uh, so send me an email, talanawithdrt at gmail.com, and I will send you the registration form. It's also for six weeks. Everything is six weeks. Fijian language classes, six weeks. Maramani Viti workshop, six weeks. And not only that, as I was saying to Sylvia in the morning, our gentlemen as well have uh, wanted to uh, see whether we're going to have a Turamani Viti workshop. So after this uh, class today, I will put up the poster for our Fijian men. 17 years old and up, if you'd like to join us as well on our workshop, also six weeks, where we will be talking about um, cultural protocol, cultural etiquette, um, how to do the Cebu Cebu, um, how to do the Tumbe Tumbe. Before we even do that, we'll step back and find out uh, what is your Nanomu Koro, Nanomu Yawusa, Nanomu Matangali, Nanomu Toka Toka, eh? because all this information will add to presenting the Tseu Sebu. Eh? So Nguna, some students, they said, I want to learn how to do the Tseu Sebu, but you have to take one step back and learn more about yourself first. Then the next step is going to be doing the presentation. It's really fun. It's really fun. But our class is very engaging. It's very inviting. It's very fun. And it's very relaxing. So we don't have to feel pressured or feel mandua and say, oh, they're going to laugh at my Fijian. Just like what Sylvia was saying. Sing, sing, sing. You'll also realize that there are other students too are feeling the same way as you. You know, you'll feel like, really, all this time I was um, feeling really shy and mandua. I didn't realize that all the other students were feeling the same. So now we belong to one big family and we're going to learn together. Yeah, so there you go. So that's a beautiful sharing from Sylvia Kumbe and I this morning. I hope that our Talano today has inspired you and not to scare you. Please. Uh, send me an email, talanowithdrt at gmail.com, and I will send you the registration form, and we will start our class on the week of May 16th. Sar, I wish you all a very good day, evening, morning, lunchtime, wherever you are in this world. Thank you very much. Okay.